let's get started. Um, I think there's people that are coming on, but uh, you know, it's, it's eight o'clock, a little after eight. <clears throat> so welcome everybody to our second session of Yiddish Live. Um, it's sponsored by the Federation of Youth Men's Clubs. And um, Joe Rothstein and Alan Davis are going to... Are, are, I'm, I'm going to mute everybody here. So I'm going to mute everybody except myself. And then I'll unmute people as they talk. Um, so t tonight is about sharing stories, jokes, expressions, um, swear words, whatever you'd like to share. And um, I'm going to start off with Alan. And I know, well, oh, Joe, you had a question to ask. So let me unmute you and you can ask the question and we can get a uh, raise of hand. Let me just see where you are here. Hold on. There you go. You should be unmuted. How's that? Yeah. Okay. So again, welcome everybody. Uh, question was raised whether we should uh, translate as we go. In other words, if we have a story to tell, we tell a sentence and then translate it into English or tell the whole story and then translate the whole story. So by a raise of hands, I'll let Mike uh, make the call. If you want sentence by sentence, raise your hand. Uh, how do you raise your hand? How do you raise, raise your hand so we can see it? Oh. Okay, so about half. About half. So maybe we'll do half the stories. No. Yeah. <laughs> the other half. I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the non-Yiddish speaker, so I was liking it to be at the end, but we'll try. We'll see what happens. So, so if you're more comfortable breaking it up, break it up. If you're not, if you'd rather say it at the end, say it at the end, you know. Okay. So you still have me on. Why don't, uh, why don't I start with a, a little bit of a story? Hold on. Let me get my story and put on my glasses. Glazelech, Leinen Glazer, reading glasses. So I'm going to uh, tell you a little story uh, about uh, uh, my father. Then ich gewain a teenager, when I was a teenager, ich geholfen mein Futter in sein Taylor und Reinigung Krumm. I helped my father in his tailor and cleaning uh, shop. Er wollt lernen mir, wie zu verkehrten a kleidel oder häusen. He was teaching me and had taught me how to shorten a, a uh, dress uh, and uh, some pants. Ein tog, wenn ich hab genutzt die nying machine, one day when I was using the sewing machine, the noodle ging in right durch my finger. The needle went right through my finger. Actually, it was this finger right there. I, know, I won't forget it. It ging to my father. I went to my father knit the needle in my finger, with the needle still in my finger. Er genommen mein Hand, mit ein Hand, he took my hand with one of his hands, und mit sein andere Hand, and with his other hand, er hat geben mir a patch in Punem. He slapped me across the face. Und der noch schlepped the noodle ois my finger. Yeah. And then he pulled the needle out of my finger. Später, later, then er hat gelegt a bandage ois my finger. Later, when he was bandaging up my finger, 
ich gebeten ihm, für was hast du ge uh, geben mir a patch? I asked him, why did you slap me? Er hat mich angeguckt, he looked straight in my eyes, und gesucht and said, as ich weiß nicht, I don't know, nor das hat mein Vater getun zu mir. But that's what my father did to me. <laughs> that's the story. The Yiddish Geschichte. That's great. True story? True, of course it's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Who would oh. like to tell a joke or share a story? Raise your hand. Hal, you want to go next? Who's on? Look at all the people. Hey. Hello, everybody. No, so I don't want to. I don't want to tell a story. Judy, this, I haven't seen you in. Oh, you look great. Thank you. You're muted. Okay. Am I muted? Not yet. Okay. So what's going on? Hal, you want to go? On? Yes. Hello, Shirley. How are you? Good evening. I get knife. So, ich will dir singen a Liedl. Ich hab nicht kein Gitter Stimme, aber ich will dir singen a Liedl. Von dus Liedl, dus is for the Kinder, as me singt them zu schlafen. Sie's a Liedl, as me singt them zu schlafen. Er, er, er weist dem Liedl, aber ich geh dir immer kehren, noch de singen. Okay, you know this song. It's a lullaby for the children, and I will translate for you afterwards. My sister knows this song well. She sang it. She played it on the accordion. Too bad we can't get accompaniment. In dem beis hamigdash, in a finkel cheder, sits the almuna bastion alein. Ir ben yochel yidle zi victim kaseder. I can't hit that note. Zaytem so shlafin alida la shen. Hai li lu li lu li lu. Unter yidlez vigele. Shteta klur vaist sigele. Dus sigele ske pohorin handle. Das wird sein dein Beruf, rosch den Kehes mit Mandlin. Schluf schön Idola, schluf mein Teier. Everybody sing along. Everybody sing. I am sorry to have punished you with the voice. Al, I have to ask you, do you Thanks, like that better than, did you like that better than singing? Yes, did I like that better than singing? Thank you, T. All right, so to translate. Safety. Security, so that was my idea. <clears throat> okay, so for translating, in in the in the temple in the base of Megdush, when a vinkala keda, a vinkal is a corner, a vinkala obviously is diminutive. It's a tiny little corner. And a tiny little corner of the keda of the room. Zitz the almona, the widow sits, the daughter of Zion alone, Bastion Elaine. You have been Yochel Yidla, the little baby Yidla, the victim to Keseder. She's rocking him to sleep. Now, when you say the victim Keseder, Seder is actually from the Hebrew in, in rhythm, back and forth in rhythm. So she sings him in rhythm, okay? When Zintum Sushlofen, and she sings him to sleep, um, Alidala Shane. A lead is a song. A lidala is a little song. And Shane, of course, is pretty. And then the, the words, Aili, Luli, Luli, Lu. A lot of your parents or grandparents might have told you that it's Aili, Luli time, or it's time to go Lulu, or it's time to go Aili, Lu, or whatever. They all got it from the same place right here. That's not same, the same. And they uh, 
Okay? No. When the Yiddel is vigala, under Yiddel's tiny little cradle, state the Klur Weiss Zigala. Klur, you could translate as clear, really means a pure, a pure white goat, a little goat, a tzigal, a tzigal, a little goat. You might have heard Drek mit Zigala Bupkis, okay? It's different. <laughs> <laughs> the Sigla's Gefurin Handlin. The the goat went out to, to sell, to market, to engage in business transactions. She's telling the boy that this will be your calling. You are going to go out to the world like this. Rushing Kismet Mandlin, raisins and almonds sweet things to the Jewish people. We didn't have, you know, all the candies we have now back in those days. If you wanted sweets, where if you had a, a plate of raisins and almonds, you were in seventh heaven. Sleep, sleep. And I add the words, my entire, my dear one. Okay. And that's, there are other verses, but there's, there's, it's, uh, you know, a little more complicated. And this is the one that most people know. My children from the time they were infants, after I sang to them Shema Yisrael and, and Via Hafta, you know, in the Hebrew, they heard many of these songs as I rocked them to sleep, either in the rocking chair or later when they were in the bed. So this is a, probably a Yiddish classic. My contribution for the moment, and I will pass the, the uh, tablet. So raise your hand if you'd like to go next. Hi, Cheryl. All right, Lou, I'm going to do Lou next. Go, Lou, Lou Peerless. From Cincinnati, From Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio. Ooh. So this is a story I'd like to read to you, and I can translate it as we go. And you prob you may know the story, but it's still fun. Amul is given dry Indian. Their is their tata, tokayenta, their butter, and their tochter mini horowitz. I took his mini horowitz, gekumen und gesucht zu pokayenta. Mama, it's the old So basically, there's some Indian families sitting around. Goranowitz, uh, Tokayenka, and their daughter is Minnie Horowitz. <laughs> Minnie Horowitz comes in and says, I've got something to tell you. Zooks Pokayenka. Good. This Shane site, do bis yet on Altamoid. Next teen, you're out. There is their booker. So, Basically, where, where is the guy? Um, and they come and they say, what's his name? Let's get back to this. I'm, I'm moving around a little bit here. Um, um, hey. You're muted. I know, I'm trying to find the side. Unmute. Lou, Lou, you need to unmute. Lou, you need to unmute. Unmute and go back in the story. Unmute. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, again, I'm looking. I have it in English. I just lost it in Yiddish. I'll be back to it though. It's okay. worth. Wor it's worth the wait. Okay. So, and I'm sorry. Okay, we'll get back to you. Thank you. Go ahead. All right, let's see who's next. Reggie, let me unmute you, Reggie. Un unmute yourself. Mike, right. wait a second. I put the words up on the screen. Um, if you oh. want to tell the story, here it is. Oh, how nice of you. Let Lou do it then. Let him read it. Well, don't Lou, have you to have to unmute yourself, Lou. Unmute? Unmute. Yeah. Oh, well, it says me. Can't hear you. Unmute, Lou. Unmute. I am unmuted. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> oh, what did I just do with that? You know, I used to be good on these computers, and I don't know what I just did. Hey. I lost what you just put up. This is not good. 
Okay. Do you want uh, a second chance? <laughs> yeah, I'll take a second right, chance. We'll come back. We'll come back. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Reggie? Okay. I, I have a joke that I'm going to translate into Yiddish. Okay? Oy vey. <laughs> I know. I have bro. Okay. There's this, uh, there's in the, in the Kleine Städtel in Poland, this is the, the town uh, prostitute in the height, uh, they call her a kurva in Polish. In the guide, in the guide, in the zook to the Rebbe, the vice Rebbe, ich weiß, was ich bin, but ich hab nicht lieb, die Menschen gib mir nicht keine Respekt. Kennst du zook ne a scheine Nummer für mir? So he says, okay, madam, we're going to call you Mrs. Kurvovich. Because they're in Poland. So straight to a few young guys today, and all the Menschen going to New York, to the Golden Land. And to say the Rebbe, the Vice Rebbe, yet is in the Daya land, and you can't go by Mrs. Kurbovich. Maybe to host another number for me. He says, How about Mrs. Horvitz? And I'm telling the story, and the kid sitting next to me is Horwitz. His last <laughs> name is Horwitz. So I like wanted to hide in the crack of the floor. And I said, No, you're kidding me. He said, No, no, my last name is Horwitz. So that's. Uh, a Yiddish joke translated. <laughs> okay, Yay, who, who's, who, who, who's next? I think Actually, I, I do have a, a short yeah, story. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Lou, I should finish what you're going to say. Okay. Well, I have a short story, and this is true <laughs> that the Rebbe's motorcade in Brooklyn, the driver was not paying attention, and he hit a young boy and killed him. Wait. So that is true. The rest is not. So they uh, decided that they better call the Rebbe into court so that he can tell his side of the story. So they bring him in and the judge says, you do have an interpreter, right? He says, yes, we have an interpreter for Yiddish. I said, good. You know every joke. <laughs> so uh, the rabbi sits down in the, uh, the dock. And uh, the prosecutor says, what is your name, please? And he holds up his hand to the interpreter, stop. And he says, my name is Menachem Mendel Schneerson. Oh. So the interpreter starts looking around and he goes, the rabbi is up, <laughs> that's cute. That's basically the Rebbe said and what his name was. Yeah, any it is. I'm still looking for the other. Okay, okay. who's next? I saw okay. some hands. Sylvia, you have to, we have to get you, you have to unmute yourself. Okay. I'm going to read this and I think the preface is that everybody knows what a schmuck is. <laughs> yeah, I've been called that for years. Anyway, Mrs. Levick was 65, a widower, was having a very lonely time in Miami Beach, and he observed a man of his age was, was never without a companion. People streaming around him, extending invitations, swapping jokes. The so Levick had screwed up his courage, leaned over and said to the popular fellow, Mr. Excuse me. What should I do to make friends? I'm going to take off a little because it's a little verbiage here. And the man said, he was a little annoyed. And he said, oh, why don't you just rent a camel and you'll ride up and down Collins Avenue and everybody will see you and they'll look at you and you won't think be very, very noticeable. The man says, okay. He, he rents a camel and uh, every day he rides up and down on the camel on Collins Avenue, and people were looking at him and pointing at him. And one day he gets a call from the parking lot where he left the camel. And the fellow said, I'm sorry, sir, but somebody must have stolen your camel. So he called the police. The police says, well, was it a male camel or a female camel? And he, <laughs> thinks and he says, it was a male camel. And the policeman says, well, how do you know that? Because <laughs> every day I'd walk right up and down Collins Avenue and people would point at me and say, look at the schmuck on the camel. 
very cute. All right, surely, surely has something. Okay, I'll I'll tell it in Yiddish and I can translate. Golda in root treffen sich auf the gas. In Golda zuck, sie kennt mir am Mazeltov, my Zoon Irving, geit Hasenehu. Oh, she shined a tzad, mazel tov, mazel tov. Aber se no do ein problem. Ma man zin, ot mir gezuk, aziot a krankheit, epis herpes, herpes? Oh, and wus is dus, can a happen this from da, uh, from, uh, the, the smigel? And Golda sucht ich weiß nicht, so Ruth sucht ich Herr Geierheim, ich frage Siri. Und Siri hat mir gesagt, wo es das Herpes ist. So sie rief er später und sie sagt, Golda, darf das nicht sagen, das Herpes ist eine Krankheit only from the Gentiles. So let me let me tell you the. I could see everybody. Yeah. Uh, Ruth and Golda meet on the street, and Golda says, "Oh, I, I deserve a mazel tov. My son Irving is finally getting married. Mazel tov." And she says, "But he said there was only one problem. The girl has a, a an illness, a disease called herpes." <laughs> and uh, the other woman says, well, is it dangerous for your son? And the Golda says, I don't know. So Ruth tells her, I'm going home. I'm going to ask Siri what this healthy says. She calls her later on and she says, Golda, don't worry. It's only a disease of the Gentiles. <laughs> 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 I have one. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. It's a little oh, off color. One. It's a little off color. Okay. In dry Yiddish mansion, there were three uh, Jewish boys. And the Eina Hat Gefreit, the first one asked, Tineshuma Hat Fis? Here, the soul has feet. And the uh, the under had uh name the neshuma hotness can feast the second one says no the soul has no feet and the director had gesuk yeah the neshuma hot feast the third one says yes the soul has feet zoi vistus how do you know this and he says I had gegong in a hand to my bab. I went home to my wife and it had given a kush. I gave her a kiss and a kitzel do and a kitzel do and I, I chepped her here and I chepped her there. And I had gesagt, good in the shuma to spray thine face. But so open your legs. <laughs> No, okay. <laughs> that, who, no, that so what happened? <laughs> oh, I got it. Who's next? Who's next? I never heard that one. Oh, I didn't. So it, it was similar. I said to my wife the other day, honey, the good word for today is legs. Spread the good word. And she smacked me and I still don't know. It's <laughs> over my... Yeah. Well, Joe... Um, Oh, I'm mute. Ruth, did you have one? Uh, Good. Well, I, I didn't exactly have a. Ich hab nicht Geschichte über nur Villain mir zu sagen, ze mir haben kein, mir haben hier Joe Rothstein und meine Tate is euch Joe Rothstein. Hi. And and a tailor is a Schneider. Okay, you were okay. And um and Al Al hat gesagt a a little for the uh, Chlorweiss Ziegele und um mir gehen mit mein Mann 
Sudi um, Yiddish Book Center. Das ist die Mug von der Yiddische um, Book Center. Und die, uh, die Simmen von der uh, Yiddische Book Center ist uh, Chlorweiß Ziegel. Yes. Das ist yes. die Chlorweiß Ziegel. Ah. Yes. Das the symbol. Okay. Das, das ist meine Geschichte. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, I think. Joe, did you have another? Yeah. Go ahead. You have to unmute yourself. Unmute. Sure. Sure. Folks, just a quickie. I'm jumping in here for a second. Rather than go back and forth looking for the mute and unmute buttons, when it's your turn to speak, if you just put your finger on the space bar, it will unmute you momentarily. Okay. I'm going to let go of the bar and you'll see I'm muted again. Okay. Where did Joe go to? Yoso, where are you? Wait a minute. Can you hear me? Here, yeah, we don't see you, we but we can hear you. Yeah. I we can I'm hear bad. you, but we can't see you. What happened to our... Uh, I do have a joke. Ah, 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 well, ah, 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 well, uh, tell, uh, you tell uh, the joke. Ruth, are you my daughter? I'm sorry? Uh, Is Ruth my daughter? <laughs> Who's Ruth? This woman here. Yeah, you have to I, I, don't think so. I don't know. So, I don't think so. Okay. But so I, a I, suggestion. My name is Ruth Rothstein. Yes. Okay. All right. That's related. I'll have to check the DNA. We have, okay. we have to do. I've got some new relatives. I give up. So a, a suggestion, since we have people from all over the country. When uh, you are recognized or you have your hand up, you can say something. It'd be nice to tell us where you are calling from. Because I think that'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. I like that. And he's, yeah. Okay, that's all I want. That's all I was going to say. Then I have a, a joke, if no one else. But I don't want to do second helpings if some people didn't do the first. Yeah, don't be a hazard. <laughs> Incident is ours. We are yesterday. How do you say yesterday? Engage, engage. Okay. 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 They are all in the zoo. As they all, they will have a castle also. Two oh, animals. Why are in the cross in one, two? Wow. Ah, Mazato. Mazato. Can you hear you from, Judy? Judy. What? I'm oh, from, from, from Cleveland, Ohio. Yay! Yay, Shirley. Yay, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think Lou. Unmute Lou. I have a funny story, but it's not Yiddish. But it's very oh. Jewish. It's very well. <laughs> For the record, yesterday is Nechten. 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 Gestern. Gestern. But a Nechtegetog is another day, right? That's not, uh, that, no, not exactly. Something else. <laughs> Nechtegetog is yesterday's bad day or something. It's a bad thing. Ne Nechtegetog means yesterday's day. It doesn't make any sense. It means like it's it's never going to happen. Exactly. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Okay. <laughs> anyway, there was a salesman 
who was uh, in a small southern town, and he realizes he's not going to be able to get back to the airport in time to get home for shopping. So he finds the yellow pages, and he finds a shul nearby. He walks over there, comes in, puts down his, uh, his luggage, and starts diving with everybody. And somebody came up to him and said, you know, my children have blown the coop. I have five bedrooms, just the two of us. How about you spend Shabbos with us? He said, well, that's a wonderful invitation. Thank you, I will. So they go back to the guy's house, and it's a real big deal with Zmiros and you know, you know, it, uh So one next to us. Come Sunday, and the guy is walking down the there, and he's black. And the post says, "Well, I have something for you," and he has an envelope. He says, "What's this?" He says, "That's my invoice." Can you see him? What do you mean your invoice? You invited me to stay here for Shabbos. I'm not going to pay you. He says, look, I got to get paid for the room, electricity, food's not getting any cheaper. You owe me $200 a night. The guy says, I'm not going to pay. He says, you must pay me. He says, I'm not going to. He says, let's go talk to the Rebbe. So they go talk to the Rebbe, and they give them either side of the story. And the Rebbe thinks, and he says, sir, you owe your host $400. The guy says, I can't believe this. And writes a check, throws it at the desk, and storms out. So he's on his way to get a taxi to get to the airport. And he hears somebody running behind him. And he turns around, and it's his host. And the host says, hold on, I got something for you. So he runs up, he waits for him. I run up to him, and he hands him an envelope. He says, now what's this? He says, it's your check. I say, what do you mean it's my check? He said, it's your check. Do you think I would charge you to stay at my home on Shabbos? He said, no, I, I didn't. But what are you, why are you paying for? He said, well, I wanted you to see what a fuck our rabbi is. Debbie, <laughs> 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 yeah, you're missing it. Where are you going? Michelle, did you want to have... Say something. Did I see you raise your hand. I have no jokes. Uh, I I I never remember a joke to be able to tell it. So I'm here just to enjoy you, all of you. Who else would it like to share something? Okay. Heather. Will, How about I'll me? Tell a story. Am How I, about me? Am I unmuted? Who who was who's talking now? Heather. I, am. I got two people talking. I got Heather. Heather from I'll Canada. Defer, I'll defer to the lady. Okay, so Heather's talking. Heather, tell them where you're from. I'm from London, Ontario, Canada. Oh, wow. Nice. I just came back and there's two skunks in my back. <laughs> I have a book I want to show you that I picked up in Miami. Can you see it? Yeah. It's very funny. It's not in Yiddish, but it's got a lot of Jewish in there. That looks good. It's called Jewish as a Sex Language. How to worry, how to interpret, how to say the opposite of what you mean. And the book is re really fun. It's, it's too thick. I won't read it about day I'll get something to show to you. <laughs> it's nice Does to see you, Shirley. Nice Does everybody you. speak Yiddish? All the people on the screen speak Yiddish? Not really. Not all of them. A little bit? A bissel? Yeah. yeah. Bissell. That's what that's what my parents spoke when they wanted to keep things away from me. So that's what mine is. So the little secret. But I figured out what they were saying. I figured and out what Bill they were saying. Of, uh, Heather. I want to uh, tell you about Heather. Adam Mann is Gavan Zara Mensch. Her former husband, her husband who passed on, Oliver Shulam, was really a, a sweet guy. You would have loved him. Yeah. Bob was a mensch. Thank hey, that's very nice. I named them too, but what are you going to do? And we did the best. Good. Okay, somebody else had their hand Marcia, up. Marsha. Marsha. Yeah. Also, Gene. Right. I'll, tell, I'll tell a quick story. Am I unmuted? Yes. Okay. I'm in East Brunswick, New Jersey, which is right next to Highland Park. Al and I belong, and Ruth belong to the same temple. So... I was raised in a small town in southern New Jersey called Woodbine. It was 100% Jewish, started by the Baron de Hearst Fund for Russian immigrants escaping from the pogroms. 
So I was raised on a poultry farm, which is a great motivation to do something else, incidentally. And so while I was a teenager, one of my tasks was delivering chickens and eggs. And I had the good fortune to deliver chickens and eggs to a Mrs. Cepelo. She was probably one of the original settlers. She spoke only Yiddish. And she said to me, a Yiddish and Wojciech darf Yiddish canon. And I was actually born in Germany. And so it was so similar to German, I knew what she was saying. And so every time I came there, I would get a Yiddish lesson. She said to me, uh, a Yiddish Wojciech darf Yiddish canon. And she went on from there. And it was so similar to German that I picked it up very quickly he would tell my father, Aina Kluge Boitschik. And that's the story. That's how I learned the little bit Yiddish that I know. Aside from the fact it's so similar to German that I can actually understand everything. So now while I have the floor, I will tell another story. I will tell it in English. Uh, Moish had an inferiority complex. And his friend said, Moish, you really need to go to a psychiatrist. So he went to Dr. Rosenberg. Dr. Rosenberg went through a battery of tests. They lasted for weeks. Finally, he came back. He said, um, Moish said, well, Dr. Rosenberg, what have you concluded? And uh, he's, Dr. Rosenberg said, Moish, I have some news for you you have an inferiority complex because you are inferior. That's a joke. Okay. <laughs> Missed it somewhere. Yeah. I think that was the joke. That was the joke, yeah. <laughs> I, have some few, I have some few things from this book if you'd like me to read. Sure, go ahead. Is that okay? Far okay, from so listening. It's, it's it's called a book, Jewish is a Sack Language. <laughs> when to worry. Lying awake at night is traditional, but morning worry makes a nice change of pace. You're fresher, you can be near the refrigerator, eat people and worry them, or you can worry that you lie awake all night. <laughs> That's Jewish. Mar Marsha, did you have something that you wanted to? Marsha was trying to say something. Three point coin. You know, one of the things, uh, since nobody's going, one of the things we, we have a problem sometimes, some of us understanding Yiddish. The other shoe, the shoe on the other foot is when a Yiddish speaking person doesn't understand so good the English. Okay. As it turns out, Mariam's husband, Moshe, was in an accident and he got hurt and they sent him to the doctor. And the doctor examined him and sent him home. And so she says, the new Moshe was his, was his. The doctor had me as if had a flucky. The doctor said I had a flucky. She says, no, what's treatment for a flucky? What do you do for a flucky? She says, it's doctor. She's not calling the doctor. She calls her friend Malka. Malka, the doctor had to joke as my husband, my man had to cook a flucky. What's treatment for a flucky? But the doctor says, my husband got a, a flucky. What do I do for it? Malka says, oi, oi, for a flucky, my daf unlike warm, schnell. For a flucky, you have to put a warm compress on it right away. She's thinking this doesn't make sense to her. Usually for a bruise, you know, you do something else. So she calls another friend. She says, Freda, I have a question for you. The doctor gesagt as my man hat me kriegen a flucky. Was treatment for a flucky? The doctor said, my, you know, my husband has a flucky. What do I do for it? I me daf a reinlegen kelt schnell. You have to put cold on it right away. So now Mariam is all confused. She doesn't know what to do. So the, doc the husband says, Reef doctor, call the doctor. So she calls the doctor and she says, you, you told my husband that he has a flucky. What do we do with that? She says, no, 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 Mrs. Schwartzberg. I said he got off lucky. Lucky, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, I, 
I have a similar story to that. Uh, Sarah comes home hysterical from the doctor. Jacob, the doctor said I have tuberculosis. And he looked at her, Sarah, you're a healthy woman. There's no way you have tuberculosis. She says, the doctor said I have tuberculosis. Picks up the phone and he calls the doctor. Uh-huh, uh-huh, thank you. He hangs up and he says, Sarah, the doctor said, the doctor said you have a big, too big a tuchus. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a tuchus. <laughs> Who else would like to add something? David. Well, David. Well, David. Yeah. This David. actually occurred. This actually occurred. Uh, this is, I'm in David Kasky in Charleston. I'm here with Anita. Um, our shul, Bristol, Israel, Orthodox shul, like Joe and Edie, I don't know if you were living in Charleston at the time. We had a big dinner honoring somebody. It was about a full social hall, three, four hundred people there. And we, I remember, yeah, we had a school. he was an optometrist who was happy to tell. And I've known a lot of people that speak Yiddish, of course, my parents. But Harry Appel, was, uh, he grew up his parents in Europe, and he was the oldest of his four siblings, and his Yiddish was impeccable. And not only was it impeccable, he was very glib. I have never met anybody who could deliver a one-liner in Yiddish extemporaneously like this. And he, but not just for that reason, but often because of his personality, um, he was often asked to be the MC at these events. And he was asked to be the MC of this event. And we had a wonderful rabbi in Charleston for 34 years, Rabbi Radinsky and his wife. Can they see me? Everybody yeah, see me? Yeah, yeah, very good friends with Joe and Eve, too. Yeah. And I don't know who else. And so Rabbi Radinsky tried to tell the folks, okay? He would drop jokes in his shirim. He would try to drop a joke in his uh, speeches on Shabbos. And the vast majority of the time, we all politely laughed. And sure enough, at this event, he stood up, tall guy. And Harry, Harry is standing right next to him, like Ed McMahon would stand next to Johnny Carson. Very dutiful, straight, standing. The rabbi punched into what he thought was a joke. And he he, go, he went through it and went on and on and on. The thing must have gone off it and went on for a while. And finally, he gets to the punchline, and sure enough, finish get okay, finish get. But everybody polite, except Harry, except the MC Harry Appel. He finishes the joke. Harry walks up to the microphone and says, "Rabbi, but does you have Stein and send minute?" <laughs> you get it? For this, I had to stand here for 10 minutes. <laughs> For those, nice. There were about 20 of us that laughed hilariously during that time. And I thought it was very, very extemporary. I see, he, I don't know if you remember Harry but he, uh, uh, he loved Yiddish. He loved to speak it. Uh, he didn't have an opportunity enough to do it, but he could really deliver a lot. So. So, Go ahead, Judy. we reminiscing a little bit about Yiddish, I, I did not speak Yiddish, and now I don't anymore, but I was speaking fluently. I learned from my father-in-law, may he rest in peace. We lived in Israel. His Hebrew wasn't very good. He lived with us, and I learned Yiddish from him. And at one point, I spoke fluently. My background is from Hungary, and he was from Poland. So uh, people were surprised, how come I have a Polish or Yiddish? But at some point, when we moved to the United States, he joined us. And he stayed with us, and he didn't speak, he spoke only Yiddish. So when we would go away to work, whatever, and the phone rang, he would answer. But he didn't understand. And people would tell me, Judy, I called you, you didn't answer, what's with you, this, that. So finally we told him, you know what? Don't answer the phone. Uh, if it's us, we will ring, hang up, and ring again. So please answer. Well, 
Of course, he didn't listen. Another time, I come home, he says to me, a Frau hat gerissen. So, was is ihr Name? Ich weiß nicht. Aber sie redet English. I have a question. Um, different pronunciations of words and different based on the region of Europe where you came from, or a Litvak versus a Litvak. Raise your hand if you say the word hot. Pace, if you say or hey, heist. Or heist. Pace, pace. Heist. Lit Litvak or haste, I think. Heist. 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 German. Reggie, you're not a Galician, right? I'm trying to think of another word that has that. I think I am a Galician. Well, you have Pitter and Putter. My father-in-law used to say, a bi he was from Poland. He would call yeah. it a bagel, not a bagel. Oh. So, yeah. I, I think there's also Kumahair and Kimahair. Kim Kim I'm, I'm very good. So what is Kimahair? Come over here. here. Come here. No. Which one dialect is it? Oh, oh, Kimahair is, is yeah. Lipfish, right? Kimahair is uh, the Lipfish. I have, I have cousins from Germany and from Poland, and they say Frau instead of Bob. Yeah, Frau. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Or German. Yeah. I have a true story from mixing up English with a Yiddish, not understanding English that well. One of my mother's uh, friends, they're all survivors, she had a female problem, so she went to the gynecologist. And the gynecologist said, you have a discharge. She says, no, I only pay cash. <laughs> <laughs> true story, true right. story. All right, I have a story, and I found my Indian joke. Oh, the, true story is, the true story is, is that I grew up a reform boy in an Orthodox home. From the, from the age of nine, I was fighting with the rich. But... My, so my parents sent me to a, a, the Chofetz Chaim oh. you know, instead of uh, the public schools. And I had a teacher from Cuba. So comes Pesach and the young man at the table. And my mother said, Louis, will you say the four questions? And I said, sure. Well, they didn't know that. They didn't know Yiddish. So they all started to laugh. So I started to cry. And I never, I, and I never did the others. I never did the four questions again. <laughs> I'm going to read this. I'm going to translate it loosely. Okay. So I only have the one piece in front of me. So Amolas and Dry Indian, the Mama Pocayenta, the Tata Garanowitz, and the Tochter Mini Horowitz. Eine Tug. Kumt ahem mit Horowitz und Zoch, Mama, ich will herten. No, I think that means I have news. No. I want to get married. Oh, I want to get married. Get married. That, that makes sense. Okay, so our mother says, married, or herten, this is like shade. Du bist jetzt ein alter Moid, der Singer auf der ist die Bucher. So she said, I said, good, tell me about the groom. And she says, Oi, Mama, Hobbit get hoffen mit a bocher, heldish. And mother cuts her off. And she says, Mama, you know, he's a, he's a starker and uh, heldish. What? Handsome, heldish. Oh, okay, handsome. Thank you. He says, Vos is a nomen, because is yeah. nomen sitting bulvan. Sitting bulvan. That's nice. What is his uh, background, uh, family background, his heritage? Sein Tate, the Michigan affair, the Gunther Mocker for the Schwarzfuss time. He said, it's not that his father is crazy horse, Michigan affair, crazy horse, the Gunther Mocker for the Schwarzfuss tribe, the big shot from the Schwarzfuss tribe. That's Blackfoot. Oh boy, 
this, this is going to be a, a big deal. Um, and then they're inviting the Schwarzfuss, which is the uh, Blackfeet. Black yeah, feet. but I'm trying to think of uh, Michigan Affair was the Sparks tribe. Great the Schmohawks, which was their tribe. When the Gonson Mishpach, the whole family, uh, I have at, at Sor. I'm Sor. Problem. Ah, thank you. Yeah. Oh, Sor. Thank you. This was the mayor. What's the matter? It's Tipi. Is Nish Groys Genuk for all the guests in Funchasene? The Tipi is not big enough for all yeah. the guests that we're going to have. Yeah. Um, Garanowitz, Garanowitz's day up them took us when Guy Klink found me a buffalo. He says, Get off your ass and go get me a buffalo. He says, is to a buffalo. Why do you want a buffalo? Mit the flesh from buffalo can ich machen a good gedemte buffalo tzimis. From the flesh, I can make a buffalo tzimis. When mit den pelts can ich machen größer de zippi. So basically, she can make food from the flesh and she needed the hide to enlarge their tzipi. Right. Yeah. <laughs> The guy was away for one night, two nights. Finally, here he comes, but he doesn't have any of it. Empty handed. So she says, Shlemiel, who's is my buffalo? Now, Shlemiel, where's my buffalo? He said, doing dine buffalo tzipis, the hub I bite and bud. I forget what that part is. Um, what? We didn't hear that. Say it again. Repeat. I have bade or bide in bud. I have you both in the bathtub. That's the literal translation, but it's like go to hell. I don't care. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Buddha, Buddha run. That's right. That's what it means. Yeah. yeah. So is it wasn't there. It's an airstream tub. Hubbard gets in a buffalo. Nit voice can look for sippy. I don't know that word. It was spoiled. A mis kite for a buffalo. I love that line. A mis kite for a buffalo. Wait, <laughs> give <laughs> Canoil Nidgezin. No, I don't get that. All right. Such an ugly <laughs> buffalo I've never seen in my life. A poor Miteg Hubbard Gezin on a dare buffalo, Royce Ganook, good Ganook, a perfect buffalo. Nu, Vuden? Vuden. Bin ich gegangen zu Schrotten Buffalo. Hubbard gesucht in ein Tosh und Goische Kopf. Ich hab gegeben. I thought, I thought it was just, I hope you got in with me here, the milky dick of tomahawk. I hope you got in with me here, the milky dick of tomahawk. I took the, took with me the, the milk, the, uh, dairy tomahawk. I thought it was the gang in with me here. The gang in with me here. The gang in with me here. The milky dick of tomahawk. So that is the story. It's a lot funnier if someone can tell it with some style and the other person can hear it with some style. So I apologize for all of that. But it's a funny story. It is. <laughs> Not as funny as wanting you to see what a Shmata rabbi is, but close. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite shows. So a, a, a quickie, a quickie. This uh, old Jewish man is in an accident. And they rush him to the hospital. Unfortunately, the nearest hospital is is run by the, the Catholic Church, you know, Sisters of Mercy Hospital. But they bring him in, and he goes through the emergency room. They have to give him emergency surgery. And uh, a week or so later, he's recovering. And um, he, the mother superior comes in to see him and says, Mr. Schwartz, how are you feeling? He says, I, 
Thanks, God. He says, with, with you nannies, you take such good care of me. He says, you shouldn't. I was so sick. I was afraid I was going to die. But you took such good care. He says, you know, I want Mother Superior. Yeah, I want to do for you a favor. I'm a very wealthy man. You'll tell me what you need by the hospital, and I'll take care of it for you. Oh, Mr. Schwartz, that's a wonderful thing. She says, to tell you the truth, uh, on, on this floor, we could use some urinals in the men's room. She's thinking, the urinals? She says, no. Viffel is, how much is it going to cost? The mother says, well, with the plumbing and it, with, with the stuff and all, it's going to cost about $10,000. No problem. I'll write you a check. It's good. If my wife will come to bring the book. I'll write you a check. It's not a problem. It's good. So the mother superior leaves, and his wife comes later, and she's talking to him. And he says, Sadie, she says, you got with you the checkbook? She says, yeah, hell, yeah, come. Yeah, come. He says, I need you to write for the hospital here a check, $10,000. He says, they, I want to give them a little gift. They took such good care of me. She says, ten cousin Paula Favors, ten thousand dollars for what? Say Darf Morton urinals. They need urinals. She looks at him, she says, Vos for a Zach is a urinal? What what kind of thing is that? He says, How should I know? My Catholic <laughs> The punchline. He says, How should I know what that is? Am I Catholic? Oh. <laughs> I have a I have a true story. Which I have a I have a quick one. Story. That's good. Really a one. I'm muted. In 2013, right. am I muted? No, no. he's still open. talk. In 2013, I found myself on Christmas Eve at St. Jude's Hospital in Fullerton, California. I had a bit of a TIA. Turns out a tiny stroke. We're very lucky, very fortunate. And the thing that impressed me the most about it is that the nun, it wasn't like they were nurses. It was like they had a calling, a calling to heal. And the experience was incredible. So I'm lying there, and the padre comes in to talk to me, Spanish speaking priest. And I'm trying to keep up, but I don't, really don't know Spanish. Shirley, where were you when I needed you? No. <laughs> so, and I talked to him a little while and I gave him the sense of you know my being Jewish and all. And a little while later one of the nuns came in and she took down the cross and put up a mug and butter. Oh wow. Saint Jude's. Good for them. Wonderful. I have a, no I have a story. I have a story along those same lines. This Jewish kid had been going to public school, and he was a terror. They just didn't know how to control him. Finally, one of the father's friends said, you know, the Catholic schools really know how to discipline kids, how to teach them manners, just teach them to be a mensch, so to speak. Okay, so the kid was enrolled in a Catholic school, and lo and behold, there are no notes from the principal. He's a model student. The uh, father goes to, says, finally says to the kid, what happened? And the kid says, my first day in there, they took me in a math class. There was this big plus sign. And they said, see that guy hanging on that plus sign? That's the last one of your type who didn't behave himself. <laughs> Classic, James. Mention, mention. Says yet nine as Vega. I'm a daft making a soif in dem sport. It's now nine o'clock. We kind of bring an end to this fun. But a couple of things. First thing, if you take the cursor that you have in your box and you put it to the upper right hand corner, you'll see the word mute and then a little box with three dots. If you click on that box, you will see it says mute my audio, stop video, and rename. If you click rename, you will see the name that's showing up on your screen. If you will put a dash, two dashes like I have, and your location and click OK, the next time we meet, we will not only know who you are, but where you're from. 
And with that, I will turn this back over to Mike. Okay. Oh, you, is, this being, is this being recorded? A little recording light just came. Yes, yes it's, it's being recorded. That's cool. That's neat. It's, it's being recorded for those of us. So, so, so we've had about 50 people that have signed up for this and, and 5 0. And somebody has shared their screen. I think that's you. Um, Not me. Somebody. Somebody's sharing the screen. But anyway. So I'd like to I'd like to get back so we could see everybody rather than do a poll. Alan, is that you sharing your screen? There. No, no. Somebody okay. shared their screen. Anyway, I'd like to get a show of hands. Would you like to do this again? Yes. We yes. don't know. They they need people who tell jokes. We okay. don't know well, we jokes. Don't. I, I need to. I'll, I'll brush up. Okay. So so should we do this about once a month? We yeah. need people who laugh. We don't need people who tell jokes. We need people who laugh. We can laugh. Um, both. I do both with the joy. Like Deborah Humber. Like yes. Debbie's a good laugher. She's good. I'm a good laugher. So we need I'm more laughs. Laugh. Mm -hmm. Reggie, you're a great laugher. Where, where is everybody from? We're here in New York, Staten Island. Where, where are all the people from? Um, I'm from Phoenix. Who's down where? Where are you, Phoenix? Phoenix. Up okay. there. Okay. <laughs> And then Carolina. Blue, Blue Ash, Ohio, which is a suburb okay. of Cincinnati. Uh, Formerly Blue Ash, now Charleston. Good. Bayside, New York. Bayside. I'm from East Brunswick, New Jersey. Uh, I don't even know I'm, I'm Al Davis's neighbor. I'm also from Highland Park, New Jersey. Mm. Me too. Mm. I'm Ruth. Although she. Ooh, I I hope. Uh, our, our success is wherever yes, we are. You live one we're all, we're we're in. Mm. We also oh, have Tova yeah. Friedman, who's in, muted, and not showing right now. Also Highland Park. Tova's a little light. Well, the next, next question is, how often would you like to get together? Once once a month. Month. Uh, it's fun. Once a month. Oh, yeah, once a month. month. This is this, what do you say? Twice a month. Um, I have uh, another suggestion. It'd be nice to get next time. Do you know any jokes? Where everybody's family was. What any time? Who's on? What's he willing to do? Hey, Gabby. Yeah. Hey, can I get everybody? Else? David had something to say. Go ahead, David. It would be very nice to know where everybody's family, McKimsuch, from uh, uh, Europe. Oh. Okay. You you want us to start? From what we yeah, know. Let's go next in sight. Next next time. Next, next, mm -hmm. next in sight. Next we'll, start, we'll start that because we, we said this would be for an hour. Maybe, uh, you can take a roll in the beginning. So, so, my so, grandmother's was born in Aiken, South Carolina. Yeah. That counts. Wow. Yeah. Really? Uh, <laughs> yeah, wow. Too. Oh, I didn't know that. So 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 what um, we, we've got, like I said, about five or 50 people that have signed up. Help. You have our email. We send out an email reminder. If you have other folks who would like to join, please invite them. Because I think there's, there's a lot of people out there that are interested in this. And usually word of mouth tends to be, hi, Gabby. Gabby. Word, word of Gabby. mouth, Gabby. Of mouth do this. So let us know. We'll, we'll set up another one for about two weeks from now. Okay. July 6th okay. is two weeks. Everybody stay well. Quick question, if I might. A Go quick ahead. question. How many people? I can only see nine. Go you on. have to swipe your screen. Yeah, we have. Swipe we your have screen. At, at, at that still, one time, there were 25 on the screen. What is the one you We never saw 25, didn't we? Right now, we have uh, 22. It's only nine. Oh, 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. Oh, oh, the other people. Yeah. We had five across the room. You have to go to full screen view to be able to see everybody. So anybody, everybody stay well. Where's your mask? Oh, I had a good mask. I don't know what I do with it. I good. And we'll talk. We'll, and then, I think that's a great place to start next time. We'll talk about where, where our families were from. Be so much fun. Okay. 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 Next time. Okay. okay. Next time. Next time. Okay. Next time. Next time. Okay. Next time. Next time. The next insight, me darf singen auf mein Schwester, a guten Geburtstag zu ihr.
Oh, Next time yeah. you have to sing happy birthday to my sister. She's on the eighth of the Yeah. <laughs> okay. Get tonight. Get tonight. Get tonight. Get tonight. Get tonight. Okay. Nice to see you. Okay. Nice to see you. Nice to see no. Nah. Nah. Let's get nah. 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 Be a good boy. Nah. Nah. Nah.